Hello and welcome to another of our art videos. My name is Anne Kinahan, uh, one half of Drink in a Hand Art and Pete is the other half who looks after the technical bits on the um, on the videos. Now this is the first of two short videos on how to paint very simple still lifes but uh, my aim is always or well not always but the aim here is to try and make them as lifelike as possible the objects in the still life as lifelike as possible so that you feel you could perhaps pluck the objects uh, off the uh, off the board like this this kind of thing and today we are going to work on or look at the stages involved uh, in this painting, so this is just a mug with uh, with three apples on. It's meant to be a shiny, uh, shiny tabletop. So for this painting, to make it as easy as possible for me, I was lucky enough to have, well, I've got lots of them actually, a, a board or a painting that I didn't like anymore. And I had painted over it with gesso again fairly lightly so that the background the painting underneath it was half visible as you can see here and uh, but instead of gesso I could equally have used um, zinc white a watery zinc white or very watered down titanium white so that the colors all show show through then I make a very simple drawing used a pencil, any sort of pencil, didn't matter how soft it was or hard it was, uh, to draw in, uh, first of all, the table, um, so the horizon, the table line. And I, the only thing there is I just wanted to make sure it was either a little bit below or above the, the middle of the board. And then the mug and the apples. So for the mug, I simply did two ovals and joined them up with lines and then a C shape for the handle, didn't worry more than that for the apples to three vague circles with little stems sticking out the top. And I just made sure that the apple in the foreground was a bit bigger to suggest that it was a bit more in the front. Then to make it easy for myself, I then got some oil pastels. Again, didn't matter which color, and I just scribbled over the, over the board. And so I do this quite a lot in my paintings and it's partly to give me something to do when I'm not quite sure what to do and partly because I know that in acrylic painting where you're building up the layers, you'll these will always show through a little bit and make a little bit more interest um, in the painting. Next, I took a smallish brush and went over all my pencil lines in fairly thick black lines. I thought about where the light would be coming from. I decided it would come from the um, from the left and therefore put shading on the right of all my objects and a big shadow in the bottom right hand corner to make that apple look like it really was sitting on the ground. I painted the foreground, the tabletop, a colour. It, it, in my case, it was just a random colour. And again, it was fairly watered down so that you could still see some of the pens, the, um, the lines and some of the previous color through it. Here, again, you can see a little bit more scribbling. So I've used a few more colors this time from the oil pastels. You can obviously be as inventive as you want. It doesn't matter at all because they will be very muted in the final painting. Now it's time to have a little bit more fun. So I decided that my apples would be yellow green. Uh, I mixed up a bit of this color in acrylic and applied it to the apples. And then where, um, where the shadows were going to be, I wanted to make that a slightly darker green. So I had, had the green ready, added a little bit of white to it so that it would cover the black effectively. Otherwise, um, the black would show through too strongly. I also thought I'd give the impression that the table was shiny at this stage and put a little bit of yellowy green reflection in the tablecloth. Again, now I had to decide what colour the mug would be. Decided it would be a nice mid blue. Uh, and the same thing again, I wanted uh, the shadow to be just a darker blue, so I added just a little bit of 
white, a mix up a darker blue, added a touch of white to make it opaque and then put it over the, um, over the black. You can see as well, I put some little dabs of white, both on the mug and on the apples to suggest that that's where the light was hitting. Now, I wanted to just deepen the background a little bit. So I put a very watered down, stronger blue on the background, but again, so that the other layers were able to show, show through. And I thought um, another way of trying to make the blue, blue mug look shiny was by doing some downward broad brush strokes in different blues to suggest that the pottery was slightly wonky and catching the light in different, uh, in different parts of the mug. Next, I looked at the background and thought this is all a bit flat and boring. And so I thought I would try a bit of darker blue in the top right hand corner. And again, you can see what I've done here. I've, <laughs> it's all accidental. I put the darker blue in the top right hand corner and then tilted the painting up and it just ran down in that kind of, that kind of dribble. Now in this one, in, again, to try and get this blue mug to look shiny, I thought I would put a little bit of reflection um, from the apple in the bottom part of the mug, some of that green and yellow in the bottom part of the mug. Now here I thought, I still thought the background looked boring and so I wanted to make it more interesting. So I put more of the dark blue in the top right hand corner and then I sprayed it with something which is called rubbing alcohol or isopropic alcohol. So uh, you can just find it on Google or Amazon and it works best if you have your painting and you spray the, it comes in a little spray canister. So you press the spray, it comes up and then you let it drop down onto the painting and then the paint will separate into little little circles. So it has to be while the paint is very wet and just newly painted and you have no control over it. You never know what it's going to look like, but you get some fantastic effects with it. Now here I added, now I thought the apples were a bit boring. So I added a bit more color to the apples and I put some oranges in to make them look, look a little bit more tempting, a little bit more rosy. And then finally, I changed the big shadow on the right, which is coming out of the apple, because I thought, well, that won't be a long, thin thing. It should really be rounder like the apple. So I did that and I hope that looks a bit more like a, a shadow from the apple. Then I was, I looked at it, you know, for a little while, checked that I thought it was roughly all right, then signed it in the bottom left hand corner. And then when it was completely dry, I varnished the board. And for varnish, I use a gel high gloss medium and just apply that with a palette knife, usually from, you know, left to right in, in strokes. It goes on white and then it dries transparent and is, is a, a lovely varnish to finish off a, a painting. So, by no means perfect, um, but I hope you think, well, I am quite pleased. I think that does look quite like a shiny, a shiny mug. Um, I, yeah, apples do look like, roughly like, I would be able to pick them up. And I do think there's an element of um, shininess to the tablecloth now. And I'm quite in pleased with what I've done with the, um, to make the background look, look interesting. So I hope, if you're a beginner, you would find this um, helpful for you. And thank you so much for watching our video.